the sound bum 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 of distant drums bum 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 far away bum 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 far away and if they call for me to come then I must go and you must stay so merry marry me let's not wait let's share all the time we can before it's too late love me now for now is all the time there may be so if you love me mary mary marry me i'm singing that song the hairs in the back of my neck are standing up why because the only time my dad ever whistled that tune was when he was trying to control his temper and since he never did control his temper it was always a prelude to slap around the back of the head that is negative conditioning <laughs> now of course i claim it made me a better man but at the time it just made me a faster runner but for all he knew for all anyone knew it could have been the perfect trigger for a pathological mind some killers rely on the flimsiest of excuses for the most heinous crimes so distant drums is not small by all accounts i should be barking mad and very very angry thank you lost something in the translation bloody tough no just ice just ice thanks freud wasn't understood for 40 years lang still isn't most english-speaking circuit actress modified the material for clarity i would just do the song if it didn't affect the money i'd do it in a frock if it didn't affect the money arrogant bastard Pardon? my ears are burning <laughs> my sister dr Fitzgerald. I just wanted to say that was a fascinating lecture. It's clear as a bell. Well done. My sister's boss. Uh, Gordon Ellison, a Royal Hong Kong Police. Oh dear. Jimmy, how's the uh, order for Peter Yang doing? Is he all right? Oh, my God, got it, sir. Oh, you all right? Happy birthday. What time do you want picking up tonight? I'll be finished around half five. Listen, everyone, I've got some news for you. Sue Lin is pregnant. Baby. <laughs> Hey, sir. I was beginning to wonder whether you knew I still existed. Is Nancy all right? She's not hiding. She's fine. Kids all right? Yeah, they're good. You okay? Yeah. Come sit down. Dennis, there's something I want you to look at. <clears throat> What's he saying? You're in trouble. Is that a question? Dennis, I'm sorry, but I need a better price on the order going through. What are you talking about? How the hell can I do it for less? You can't afford not to. 
I'll buy you out. Whatever you owe, I'll cover it. Then you can go home. You've spent ten years watching me build this up and you're poking this under my nose? You must be out of your bloody mind. When you were stuck, I helped you. What's the problem, Peter? Your Beijing buccaneers telling you not to play with me anymore. No one tells me how to run my business. And what about that lot out there? Don't walk away from me. Listen, for Christ's sake. What are they supposed to do? Think about yourself now, Dennis. Get out. Mr. Yang wants to take the factory off me. He came around today and he was standing this far away from me and I'm still trying to work out why I didn't just chin that bastard. I'm sorry, Su Lin. I've let you down. I've let you down and I should have said, and I'm saying now, Saying what? I lost three big contracts between March and May. So I took a flyer. I took an order I couldn't supply. I haven't the money to pay them back. And now the bank's moving in for this place.
tell me. What's the point? You never find out, so I've got to make everything all right. I can't understand. We just had a holiday. You bought me two dresses last week. Where did the money come from? You deserved it. Look, I'm not going to stop trying just because I've told you. Okay. We put this place on the market tomorrow. Do we owe money to the lawyer? We can rent somewhere in Manka till we know how things are going to work out. Do you want us to bring our child up in Mong Kok? If I can get hold of one decent contract, one that's big enough to shout about, I can turn all this round. I can still bail us out. Dennis, I can't have this baby. We can't have this baby. What are you talking about? I've been to see Dr. Sani. I swear to you, it's not just this. I'm not ready. Neither are you. Selene, don't do this to me. I can't do this. Look, I want to sit back and watch you work yourself to death for me or anyone else. I love you. We can start again when the timing is right. I think it's fantastic, you know. The rest of the world fakes democracy, fakes diplomacy, fakes civilization. In Hong Kong, that's all bollocks. Show us your money, you've got a life. I really like that. Your life or death depends on the size of your wedge. And if life was as simple as that, I would have died years ago. God, did you see the size of that bloody thing? Get in the car. Come in. Dennis, I'm glad you've changed your mind. There's another copy of the contract somewhere. How are you going to pay me? I can make the check out to whoever you want. I want it making out to the business. You wipe it out in taxes. I want it making out to the business. Peter, you're obviously up to your eyes, but give me a ring when you've time for a drink. Peter, give me a ring when you've got a minute. You thought I was tapping you for a favour? There's no shame in that. I've done enough for you. Dennis, this has nothing to do with being friends. It's business. I've got no choice. No choice? This and this and this? They were to tell you the good news. Sunan's pregnant. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. I don't know what to say. What do you feel like saying? Congratulations.
I'm not going to hurt you. I love you. I just want you to think. Please, think about the baby. Peter Yang is a personal friend. That implies he got his hands dirty. I keep track of all my personal friends. He's a wealthy man. There must be something. I've already got reporters telling me what I had for dinner last time I was seen in a restaurant with him. I've got the widow's lawyer squatting in my office asking for my plan of action. And I'm meeting in a couple of hours with His Royal Highness the Sully Commissioner. Look, this isn't good news for either of us. I go in May, you walk neatly into the jar, yes. Not if this one falls down. I don't want a desk job in the Metropolitan Police. You don't want posting to some refugee unit. All that's required is we throw everything we've got at it. You think a criminal psychologist is a safe bet? You think he's a responsible adult? He's something to throw at the press. Why don't we just investigate the case and throw that at the press? Please. Hey, 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 I don't remember ordering anything from the other menu. I just had you removed from the university. Oh. Democracy in action. On what grounds? One, I think your lectures are under-researched, over-personalized bullshit. Two, Commander Ellison needs your professional advice. Well, tough titty, I'm not for hire. This is a lecture tour, not the lucky dip. He'll pay good money, which is probably better news for your wife than it is for you if your gambling's anything to go by, right? Tell Commander Ellison I'm flattered. Tell him yourself. A business killing? Is that not a euphemism for the little finger, the old pinky etchemy? 
Triads don't do fingers. That's Yakuza. Well, I'm very Japanese. attached to my little fingers. A very useful social tool in Britain. More useful in some stages than the, than the old penis. And yes, size doesn't matter. It's what you do with it. In Edinburgh, we use it for getting more scones when we're having afternoon tea. In Manchester, we use it for picking the scabs off our infotagas. It's a very useful little tool. 沒有證據顯示不移動過 He'll sign off the time of death within three hours He won't say precisely whether it's amateur or professional and he won't commit himself to a murder weapon until the autopsy. You speak Cantonese? No, but I do speak post-mortem to intermediate second year. Any sign of a robbery? We don't know yet. How heavy is that thing? Not heavy enough. Depends how determined you are. You're the criminal psychologist? Yes. You have no need of us here, apparently. We're more straightforward about murder than you are. I'll do my autopsy around five. The press have found out that you're on board. You may be squeezed for speculation, but I'd rather you just talked about your qualifications, experience in urban homicide in Birmingham. Manchester. Well, it's not a hobby, Gordon. What are you offering? Two thousand a day, plus expenses. Pounds. Dollars. US. Hong Kong. Accommodation? No. Okay, okay. New accommodation? Where? Res Carlson. He's got debts at the Tangta Hotel, which is pretty hard to achieve. Okay. I'm not used to working alone. You work directly to DCI Chong, who report to me. There's one of the best staff police forces in the world with all the resources you need. Well, if money's the only motive you're used to. There's a detective in England I have a special relationship with. Well, I'll have to liaise with the Home Office. What's his name? Jane Penhalligan. Greater Manchester Police. I'll need her to help me. Are you absolutely confident you can be of assistance? This murder is not about money. We don't know that yet. Is the wallet intact? Okay. Forget about the victim. Try and picture your killer. He's on a different mission. He's completely unarmed. When things go wrong, when the shit hits the fan, does he shoot him? Does he stab him? No. He stows his head in with a nickel-plated trophy. He's in an office with half a dozen heavier and therefore more suitable objects. And what does he choose? A trophy on a shelf so high he has to reach up to get it. That is his murder weapon. This man knew his victim. He envies his victim. He resented his achievements. This is no straightforward murder. This is disorganized communication. When you're checking his contacts, keep your eyes peeled for underachievers. Dr. Fitzgerald, that's absolutely bloody fascinating. None of which you'll find out from an autopsy. And I, I feel as if I know you. Call me Fitz. Yeah. Chang Chong. Ah, sorry. Please sit down. What can I do for you, Mr... My girlfriend came to see you last week. Su Lin Tang. Is she with you? She's scared. I think you've put her off. <laughs> off what? The abortion. I can't discuss this with you. If she wants to come back... Well, you come back together, I'll go over the details. Go over the details for me. How much is this going to cost? Yep. 
I've left my bag. Can I? Please, go ahead. Thank you. Six thousand five hundred. Six five. <laughs> cheap at half the price. Very cheap. Not everyone on this island is as wealthy as you are. Is weakness an opportunity, or opportunity a weakness? Just sit on the bed and we'll discuss this. Yeah. Sir, your message. Thanks. Oh, right. Have a drink on me, sir. You either are something, Dr. Sonny, or you're not. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing in between. How old, my child? This is not the place to discuss your girlfriend's situation. She hasn't got a situation. And who's asking for a discussion? I don't listen to people like you. Babies. I don't just do terminations. Well, you're not doing this one. I don't want personal relationships screwing up my investigation. Huh. Coming for another female detective. Might I suggest it's a trifle narrow-minded and just a little ironic that you should assume it's personal. He specifically asked for her to be placed in a room connected to yours. Yeah. You're costing me a lot of money. I'm not paying for a honeymoon. Oh, Jesus, no. Hi, hi! Where is she? I didn't know spouses were invited. Mind you, I haven't said that really would have loved that flight, you know. DCI wise, Greater Manchester, please. DCI Janet Lee Chung. Nice to meet you. Uh, really wants a wind chime, so whatever I do, before I go home, remind me a wind chime, otherwise I'm a dead man. Pen Halligan, where's Pen Halligan? Pen Halligan's been made up to an inspector, hasn't she? So she's had to go back to school. But the Home Office wanted a senior officer, and I was the only one with any holidays left. Didn't you get the message? I hope you don't mind. We put you in the room next to um, Dr. Fitzgerald. Fitz. 
The furthest I've been is Fuengarola. God. Look at me, I'm sweating like a bloody pig already. I believe the coppers out here are on really good money, aren't they, love? Jan Clark, call Jan Ginksy. Hi. And you'd say to her, you're gone, Mokdo, in Tertia, why you be a good son? Okay. There's been another murder. I hope you're fit for action. Oh, yeah, I'm wide awake now. Overdose apparently, because anything you don't use, you get rid of. <laughs> vitamin pills, no vitamin A. That's bad for you, it's bad for the baby. Liver damage if you read the books. <coughs> stretch band. You know what a stretch band's for? It's all cardiovascular. Guarantees your circulation's absolutely tops. Under your foot, around your wrist, and stretch. Tightens all your muscles. I just want to go. Where? Home. Take me home. Please, look at me. You need a doctor. It's all right, I found one. So, you'd have gone to your sister's, ignored the phone for a couple of days, so Dr. Sonny could have done the business and I'd have been none the wiser. Three-day tiff. Don't worry. I've got it sorted. I'm gonna make it work. A couple of kids who make sense of it all. I distinctly remember you saying it. I said that three years ago, Dennis. I'm saying you were right. I'm on your side. You should be smiling. We've got nothing to offer. Just imagine what it will look like. I say it, you might have had a scan for all I know. Do you know what sex it is? You can't keep me here till I deliver baby. Oh, baby. Look at me. Look at you. Just imagine what it will look like. If you keep me here, I'll die. Don't be a softie. Look at me. Would I hurt you? Have I ever hurt you? I'll get you everything you need. This is spacious for Hong Kong. It's bigger than our first apartment. You've got a bed, you've got books, time to think. 
on your feet. You've work to do, madam. Under your left foot, around your wrists, and stretch. Paul, it only works if you get a sweat on, Sue Lynn. That's it. Good. You're going to be fantastic at all this. Keep going. Keep going. We have to treat these as two separate murders. Wrong. The first was killed with a blunt instrument. The second was knifed. The first was killed in a private office. The second in a public place. The face of Peter Yang was covered. Dr. Sonny wasn't. Dr. Sonny was left sunny side up because he had no shame in killing him. Either he'd never met the man or he's simply losing his conscience. The behavioral hallmarks of both murders are absolutely identical. There's a second weapon because the first is done at the forensic lab. The important thing is, he took a weapon to the second murder. So he shifted from being a man who has killed to being a killer. He's more experienced, he's more organized, he's harder to catch. He commits ritual humiliation on his victims. You may be more powerful than me, there's nothing I can do about that, but if I take your life, then I have won. You're saying humiliation's his only motive? Absolutely. Fact. Dr. Sonny was carrying $10,000 when he left his office. The secretary saw him pack it in his briefcase. Fact. Only three and a half thousand remained. In the absence of further evidence, we treat the killing of Dr. Sonny as aggravated robbery with homicide. The killer was disturbed. There must be witnesses. And this means absolutely nothing. Prayer? Praying? What are you, C of E Methodist? Only when I go into hospital. You? Catholic. Only when I go to the bookies. Hail Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us winners now and at the hour of our death. This is a, a Christian symbol. A Western gesture. No, not necessarily. Well, it is when you're about to die. How many people you interviewed so far? Forty-two. How many of them Westerners? None. One. You're looking in the wrong place. Whoever killed these men isn't Chinese. He's white, Western, Caucasian, an outsider. But he's not a visitor. He lives here because he knew his way around Peter Yang's address book. He's a loser because he yearns power. And the only reason he trashed the office after the murder is to the jet light skies are at the front. To make it look like a robbery. Because? Because he wanted to protect his own identity. Which means he, he could have been traced back to his victim. That narrow the field down for you? You need to go to bed. That's very forward of you. I was talking to him. What?
lives this high up, he's not an underachiever. DCI wires. Frank Carter, how are you doing? All right. How are you doing? Eddie Fitzgerald. Uh, the bus. DCI Chong. I'm due at the airport by half past. You've got ten minutes. No, oh, absolutely not. It was completely scrupulous. He worked hard, if that's a crime. Slept about six hours a day, but uh, the joke was that Peter Yang did some of his best business with his eyes shut. Pure instinct. Just made tons of money. And that's one thing the Chinese, forgive me, have a genuine respect for. Thank God. <laughs> Are these all the names you could think of? Yeah. Will you be staying, Frank? Staying? After the handover. Will you be staying where the money is or will you be going home? I've been moving down to Singapore. In about 15 minutes, somebody needs to find Milado some deal. And... He wasn't just a businessman. He had a lot of decent friends. Like you? Yeah, like me. How long have you been doing business with him? Off and on, ten years. Peter was a good mate. It was him who taught me into the move. Where from? Essex. Romford. The day before the murder, Peter Yang wrote you a check. For an order. He did every quarter. That order, actually. Well, it's all paid for. Presumably Nancy, his wife, is going to take over the business. You were going to the funeral? You were that close? Of course. It's too early to talk business, but I've told Nancy I'll help where I can. How come this check is for nearly three times the normal order? He made some new contacts on the mainland. He was doing well. In case you hadn't noticed, the Chinese are getting very Chinese this year. But he was keen for us to keep working things out. Do you find the money sexy, Dennis? That's an odd question. Can't be many Rumford boys sent airmail home. Do you know anyone with a grudge against Peter Yang? No. We think Peter Yang knew his killer. When did you last see him? I'm a suspect. <laughs> Formality. He came here on Tuesday. Didn't stay long. Witnesses? Everyone in the building. Thanks for your time. We just got married. It was the hot day. You couldn't see my feet because the dress came all the way down to my shoes. You couldn't see my face because the veil came all the way down to here. When you lifted it to kiss me, 
Everything felt perfect. Are you asking me to marry you? I feel asleep. Thinking about the first time I ever met you. Handsome, for Englishman. Polite, for businessman. You said I was the most beautiful woman you ever met. Are you asking me to marry you? I'm waiting for you to ask me. What are you talking about? What are you doing? You're thinking about the baby. No, just ask me. I've asked you a dozen times. You don't want a wedding. Your timing was bad. Just ask me now. You'll have to come to England with me. We'll get out of here, away from this mess. Shh, shh, ask me. Just ask me. Sulin, I want you to marry me. Okay. Two conditions. You promise me on your life. I get the best wedding Hong Kong ever seen. You promise me, in England, when we start again, you talk to me. When you look at me, you see someone you can trust, someone who loves you. We look after each other, okay? Yes. Okay. Let's go home, okay? Where are we going? Not yet. I'm in charge of this one. I want this to be a surprise. No, Dad! Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Come on in. God, what time do you people work until? This is not what I'm used to. This is not what I'm used to. What's happened? You were right about Dr. Sonny. He wasn't robbed. We found the money. Please, don't look at those and tell me you get used to it. Jesus. With a guy like this, you got no guarantees, except that he hates himself and hates what he's doing. So much so that he wants to be stopped. If he wants to be caught, then why is he hiding? No, not caught. Stopped. You're heading the investigation. He knows you're in charge. He's never even met you. But he's trying to make you responsible for his crime. If you think like Pavlov's dog, you'll get nowhere. Try and think like him. Think like you're desperate. When they get to this bit in Manchester, we throw a bucket of cold water over him. You have to recognize this man's pain. I can't do that. Dr. Sonny's left three What's children aged 5, 7, and 11. It's not your concern. I still don't buy the motive. A wealthy exporter and an obstetrician. If we can't connect them, we can't make a case. An obstetrician? You were with me when I viewed the office. It's on the door. Not in English, it's not. Some babies survive. Some babies don't get that far. Which carriage? Abortion? What does an abortion cost in the island these days? Six thousand dollars. Six and a half. Maybe. Right. She finds out she's pregnant. She goes to see about an abortion. He finds out. Kills Dr. Sunny. I still don't understand what Peter Yang's murder has to do with this. Glittering example of success. 
This guy's got everything that our man hasn't got. The killer's wife's planning to abort the child that they both know they can't afford. Otherwise, why stuff that amount, that precise amount, down Dr. Sonny's throat? But why not stick it in the bank if you're that skint? Because the money is not as important as the principle. It hangs together. Yeah, like a wrestler's plums. Do you, soon in Tang, honour the promise that you will take this man, Dennis Colin Philby, as your lawful wedded husband? I do. Do you, Dennis Colin Philby, Honour the promise that you will take this woman, Su Lin Tang, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, and to love and vow to protect her for as long as you both shall live. I do. You may now kiss the bride. It's the happiest day of my life. So, you need to have Nicola by door to young fool. These are this week's patients for termination. What are there normally that many? Hi, my tongue, son, dog and dog. Hi, yeah, hey, hot in. In summer, yes. Needy, so hi, yeah. Hi, man, on fat son, go yuck, go yuck, we bill. These are all the appointments from the day of the murder. We're gonna have to work through these. Yep. And all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay. Catherine. DCI, Janet Lee John. When I read about the murder, I didn't know what to do. I'm nearly four months already. And your parents don't know? My parents work for the government. And your boyfriend? He's a student teacher. Your last appointment with Dr. Sonny was on uh, the 17th at 2 p.m.? Yes. Well, no, I was on my way back to school, but I realized I'd left my bag. I used a handbag to make me look older. You went back to surgery. You saw Dr. Sonny. He was with a patient. I got the bag and left. I didn't see the man's face, not really. The man? An Englishman. His back was to me. Why English? Why not Caucasian? White? I don't know. Maybe I picked up words or an accent before I knocked. Could you identify him? Fair hair. He had a briefcase on his knee. I promise you won't say anything to my dad, please. What are you going to do? I don't know. Ring me if you need to. You've got my number. You do? You don't. You do. Don't. But I will. Allison's complaining about how much we're spending on you. Yes, well, you did try and warn him. Waiter! Another bottle of this when you're ready. So, have you ever said it? Said what? You've never cracked, pinned him to the wall and told him what an arsehole he is. That's not my opinion. You just don't like him. Oh, and you do. 
the Brit with no talent in your job. That is loyalty approaching self-abuse. That's a very nasty English habit you've picked up. I can think of worse. Your parents wouldn't agree with that, would they? They're much bigger plans for you. I bet you had to fight them to get into the police force, didn't you? What did your father do? He's a stockbroker. Taught you English from so high. I was taught lots of languages. Yeah, but this is an English colony. You're surrounded by 18 carat Englishness, but he chose to have you tutored in the language of opportunity by an American. What does he think of Ellison? At least Ellison's honest. I think the worst kind of Europeans are those who um, have strong opinions about what other Europeans are doing here. Well, a flyby lecture tour is hardly an in phase of occupation. Not unless I start farting land of hope and glory to introduce a lecture on white collar crime, which I like to think I've grown out of. Do you often do lecture tours? First and last. Plain load of wanky academics flying around the world pretending it's a mercy dash. Oh, we must exchange cultures. Yes, we must exchange cultures. I've seen more cultures on a pasteurized yogurt. So were you happy when we came along? Sure. Not nearly as happy as my wife. Scunthorpe. Sulin? No, Leia? Sulin? I hope that's the granny. You haven't seen her? She's not here. She can't find her. She's been trying to find her. I understand. Why didn't she come to her house? Why didn't she call me? She's not here. Her daughter left home on Tuesday night. Hasn't called since. Just before the murder. What murder? Dr. Sunny, did you know him? What Dr. Sunny got to do with Su Lin? He didn't know she was pregnant. She consulted him about a termination. She never turned up for the appointment. She wouldn't do that. You know whose house we're in, don't
Come in. Dennis Philby. Yes. Gerald Freeman. We've met. Have we? Patrick Lee's birthday party at the Correspondence Club. Octoberish. You're a friend of Patrick's? <laughs> You're kidding, my brothers. Your wife's something big in the legal eagle world. You have a good memory. She all right? Kids all right? Uh, no kids. <laughs> right. Not that good a memory then. And his phone log. Let's find him. It's always hard. I don't know what you want me to say. Congratulations, wouldn't go amiss. It's taken me long enough to persuade her. Mrs. Dennis Philby. That sounds really weird. Feels really weird, I tell you. If she needs a passport. You just say yes, don't you? <laughs> About a year ago, a batch of marriage certificates disappeared from the printers. Selling for twenty, thirty thousand dollars. This isn't even a good copy. I've seen them for sale myself down Temple Street Market, for God's sakes. But you know what the joke is? It literally isn't worth the paper it's printed on. They're pointless, Dennis. The only passports issued were high yield emigres, hyenas, if you want to be cynical. The UK tried to make out it was refugee rescue, but the only status they targeted since Pat and Pitch Camp is big business. If you were on that list, you wouldn't be here now. Look, I'm a Briton. I've got a passport for my wife. If this is all you've got, she is not your wife. I married Su Lin Tang yesterday, and it's my bloody right to take her to England with me. Why is that a Hey, 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 you? calm down. I should be notifying the police now. I won't. Turn around and go. We'll forget I ever saw this stuff. 20 grand in cash. I didn't hear that. 30. This is my job. 40. Please, 40. Look, I am trying to do you a bloody big favour here. And really, the best thing you could do right now is just piss off. Okay? Dennis Philby, P H I L B Y, Gumfat, Namgan, Jogan, a Luxek, a Dunzal Sam.
I'm coming back. We'll be together, I promise you. I love you. doesn't make sense. What does he want? Philby came here this morning. We found this in this fella's desk. But he married her. Let me get this serial number checked. I'm a armbiller. That's I am. I've a shipment ready to move. I have to get it on tomorrow's 10 o'clock to Southampton. Uh, I think we're beyond civilian assistance now, don't you? Me? Enjoy the money. It's been a pleasure meeting. Thank you very much, Dr. Fitzgerald. I thought he was a participant. Measured by what? His results or the money? You only know it's him because he ran. He only ran because he was chased. The only thing you've got to link him to his victims is his girlfriend, who's not here. Good luck, Gordon. Where's that canteen? You stay. It's a bit premature for a cultural coup. If he goes, I go. You shouldn't even be talking to me without my lawyer. We'll get you a duty lawyer. I don't want a duty lawyer. Willie Tang's my lawyer. I want him here. Don't be awkward. Just answer the questions. You murdered Peter Yang for money. He wrote you a check? That was Monday. The date on the check was Monday. His wife confirms that his handwriting looks strange. It's because he wrote the check under duress. Rubbish. Your dabs are all over this checkbook. I'm being questioned for murder because I happen to hold somebody's checkbook. No. You've been questioned for murder because your girlfriend checked in with Dr. Sonny for an abortion. Dr. Sonny, who you murdered in, and please don't take this too personally, a man ever fitting a boy from Rumford. What? You know, the only time I ever went to Rumford, I was chasing this undergraduate nymphomaniac whose parents were away for the weekend. Neither of which turned out to be true. There I was under her window going, go on, let's see, geese a shag. And dad came flying out the front door and smacked me in the mouth. Who's he? If ever you're passing through England, you must look me up. I can offer you a 10% discount. Account of the fact that I feel as if I already know what makes you tick. Murder, Swin. Provoked. Were you provoked, Dennis? No. Never? Never provoked?
never won anything, Dennis. How much are you paying this joker? Peter Yang was killed with a business trophy. I just wondered how significant that was. It's not as if you're one of 11 children, Dennis. I'm just wondering where all that competition came from. Only son of a carpenter. Mother's name begins with M. Mary. Maureen. Gloria. No, I was cheeking, of course. I, I peeked at the notes that my colleagues had faxed through from London. He's been talking to your family. What have you said? Me? Three dead bodies, blood all over the place, in all the newspapers, blah de blah de blah As you do. So, only child, working class family, middle of Romford. What's the name of the firm again? Jack Philby and Company, join us. Didn't fancy the business yourself? No. Couple of O-levels, talked you out of it. Three A-levels, chemistry, physics and business studies. Business studies? Ha! Bloody hell, Dennis. If these aren't grounds for suing them for the course fees, I don't know what are. I wouldn't trust you in a piggy bank. So, you're explaining to your family while their lifestyle isn't good enough for them, because you've set your heights sky high, since you blossomed into a educated Essex boy, at one time considered to be a um, contradiction in terms. How are they taking it? He's proud of me. He say as much? Yes. He lied. Skilled worker in a traditional occupation. There's nothing he wants more than the whole ritual of bringing up a child, setting him free, only to have him flying straight back, stick to his dad like shit to an army blanket. Join the farm, take the wages, move two streets away. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, I can't get rid of that lead. But inside, he's singing. Huge compliment for a man like that. Don't you dare take the piss out of my father. You did. You must have done. You think my education was wasted? You're a middle-aged shrink, and the best you can come up with is a few naff Essex jokes. You're really original. Proud of Essex? Yes. And your parents? Yes. You love your family so much, you chose to live 6,000 miles away. In totally different life, in totally the opposite direction. Running from what? Running from nothing. That was business. Ah which was going so well, you just wanted to share it with the rest of the world. If that's how you want to put it, yes. No. Your business had collapsed, Dennis. You are filth. F-I-L-T-H. Failed in London, try Hong Kong. You came here to run away and escape from your failure, Dennis. That's all right. That's half the Brits in the island. Peter Yang persuaded me to set up here because he knew we'd both make a bloody killing. Pardon your Freudian French. I'd have thought a man like you, Dennis, would be more sympathetic to your victims. Peter Yang, a millionaire whose only feeling was that he get everything he never wanted. Or Dr. Sonny, whose feeling wasn't actually that he was going to perform an abortion, but that he had the power to control your future. This is all wind and piss. You've got the wrong man. No, Dennis. You've got the wrong man. The Victorians came by boat, you know, pissing themselves with glee. Do you know why they called it the Fragrant Harbour? It wasn't the herbs and the spices. It certainly wasn't the shellfish. No, nope. it was the smell of crisp pound notes and cash registers. Turn it on. They came, they saw, they conquered. Just like you, Dennis. Big boys playground. You only had to be here to look successful to your family. Can you turn the light on, please? Of course, we should never have been here to begin with, really. India was a doddle because the masses were passive. We plundered the Commonwealth with scarce a squeak. But we really overstretched ourselves when we came out here. Do you know why? Because they want success even more than we do. It's written all over your face. And his, and mine. Guaylos, white ghosts, we are visitors, Dennis. You would never belong here. Turn it on! Turn it on! Sit down! Turn it on! Sit down! 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 Sit down!
a mistake, sir. I don't give a shit. Get him out of there. No. Get him out. No. When I said family, you said him. When I said parents, you said him. You do have a mother, you know, Dennis. He didn't carve you out of Blockwood. Dated 1985. So why did your mother not count as family? Who do you think you favoured, Dennis? Mother or father? Him. Really? You've changed your hair colour. Before that was allowed, you must have been a spit on fire. No. Oh, yes. You've got the wrong man. The man we're looking for, Dennis, kills his victims in the dark before dressing them. Ties their hands like that. Have you anybody you know, Dennis? No. Oh. So, you're terrified of the dark and you're ashamed of your mum. Is that common in Rumford? In the dark, Dennis. Please don't do this. What did you see, Dennis? <sighs> Can't scare me, Dennis. You're trembling. Look. <sighs> I can help you. Just tell me. I can't see anything. <sighs> if I phone the house, who do I speak to first? Mother or father? He'll tear him apart. He'll blame me. He doesn't know. No. Your little secret. Yours and your mother's. That you're somebody else's son. I'm not. Every year you get a little older, look a little less like your father until it gets embarrassing. You're only a child and every time you stick your face in the mirror, you look more like that man. That man who made love to your mother. He's written all over your face, till one day your father gives a sideways glance and he knows. He knows that you and your mother have been lying to him for all these years and you're the one he'll blame. It wasn't my fault. You didn't tell him. I didn't know what was going on. We were going to the library. You were her alibi. Libraries aren't dark. Garages are. What kind of garage? Repair shop. You're smelling the petrol. You're smelling the oil. They push you into a corner. They push you into an office. Play with your books, Dennis. Read your books. How can you read your books? They put the light out. How can you do anything when you put the light out? They've locked the door. You're rattling the handle, you're kicking, you're screaming to be let out. All you can hear is grasping and groaning. That's your mother out there. What's happening to her? She's shagging him. You're guessing. I took a torch. The third time I took a torch. You saw him? Yes. Did she take you again? On Mondays. Library day. And you stop kicking. That man's banging your mum out there. You let it happen. You let it happen. Because she's telling you you'll hurt your dad if you open your mouth. The family will fall apart and you don't want to cause that. So you sit in the dark with your torch and your books and pretend you don't know what's going on. Pretend it never crossed your mind how far back they went. Before you. 
and you're on the way to school and your dad thinks you're not talking to him because he's done something wrong. He's laughing because he's running out of lists of things he could have done. And then he gives up, but you still can't speak. <sighs> then a Sunday afternoon, you get back from your nans and he's looking at you like he hates you. Really hates you. <sighs> you can't see her, but she's crying somewhere. <sighs> your nan walks you to school now and nobody says a word about it. It takes what seems like years for him to open his mouth again, and when he does, his voice sounds different. You just keep wishing you could get out from under his feet. <laughs> when he gives you your first wadge of money to start your own business, you know exactly why he's doing it. This is bloody biblical, Dennis. If you hadn't murdered three people, I'd be weeping into a bucket. I really would. What you've just given me is the highly digestible notion that people aren't nice to each other. Is that your secret? Is that your excuse? Three dead bodies, three more families liquidized. When I left home, she left home. He's sitting there on his own and he's done nothing wrong. When Su Ling got pregnant, I knew that was my ticket home. I get a baby. Something that's mine, something I cherish. I take it to England and I show it to him, not her, him. I'm showing him a beautiful family. I'm wanting him to know that I'm not like that. I'm not like her. I want him to feel we belong to him. But she wanted to abort. She didn't think we were ready. She had no idea how ready I was. I'm saying it's my biggest chance and she's just not buying it. The business is bombing, the colony is bombing. And I spent just about as long away from home as I can. I knew she'd never be solid about it. I couldn't trust her word, she wouldn't just go off and do it behind my back. <sighs> she was never a good liar. Was? She's dead. I killed her. <sighs> what about the others? Peter Yang, Dr. Sunny, and the civil servant. You repeat this in front of a lawyer? <sighs> yes. Where's the body? <sighs> I've lost a wife and child like he's lost a wife and child. So, when he comes to see me, we'll understand each other. He's lying. He's not. Forensics found human hair in the boot of his car. And blood. We know it's her type because of the doctor's record. Please, just listen to him. It's Camberwick Green. All he's confessed to is just fantasy. His fantasies are all tagged in the morgue if you need another look. No, her. Her. If he'd killed her, he would have confessed in the first five seconds. Dr. Fitzgerald, we needed a confession, we got a confession. Now, why the hell would he confess? Why do you think, you vacuous shite? You just pissed on your chips, Doctor. Now, please leave the building now. She is alive, and he knows where she is. Folic acid. Iron pills for pregnant women. So? Malado was arrested by him, and he's not up to stick, is he? Wherever he's got her, he planned to keep her there till she gave birth. Without him, she'll die. I can't take responsibility for letting him go. 
If you wait for the commissioner's decision, she's going to die. If she dies, you take responsibility for both those lives. Well, there's no guarantee he'll lead us straight to her. Leave it to me. I guarantee he will. Okay. Pick a lawyer. He confessed. A confession extracted under duress. You're not qualified to take confessions. You're a civilian, Dr. Fitzgerald, and you've just jeopardized my entire investigation. I want to see my client. That man is guilty. It doesn't matter whether he's guilty anymore, you jerk. You put words into his mouth, you've screwed my case. I want you out of this building. I want to see my client now. Mr. Philby, my name is Sam Kai. I've been assigned. I'm going to get you out of here. You've been asked to make a statement on tape. That's not going to happen. You don't say anything to anybody till we have talked. No. They've got no evidence against you. They had no right to hold you in the first place. Why didn't you call a lawyer? I tried. I... Okay. They've got my car. They took my car away. You get your things. I'll handle the car. I'm letting it go, Dennis. Me too. I suppose I left out the question. I don't want to talk to this man. I don't want to talk to this man. Car keys. Car keys. You're a liar, Dennis. But I know your little secret. I don't want to talk to you. Chillin's not dead. You haven't killed her. You know what the real tragedy is? Shut up! You're too late. She's already had the termination. What? Ten days ago, when you were in Macau, she made all your decisions for you. She doesn't trust you, you see. You lying bastard. Have you spoken to the mother, Wei Wei? I have. I'll see you in my office in about an hour. And drive carefully. Now we'll go to her. We've got two cars tailing him from the other side. He's not stupid. They lost him on the other side of the tunnel. What?
He must have other premises in Kowloon. No. Nope. Well, if he's renting, he's not spending money to his account. But what is there in Kowloon for him? With a pride that big, there's only one place, one person he's got to take it to. His father, he's going to take it to England. Tough shit. We've got all his documents, he won't get through the ports. Well, maybe he doesn't have to show his face. He's moving boxes and crates all the time, isn't he? That's what he does for a living. There was an export order booked from his factory. Documents were on the office wall. He's gone bust, though, hasn't he? What's he supposed to be exporting? That's where freight storage and shipping crates. Singy Island. His second home. That's where he'll be. I lied, so you come here. So I'd find Sue Lin. The lawyer was a copper. I'm afraid we all lied. Because none of us want her to die. Look at me, Dennis. Look at me. On my children's lives, Dennis. On my children. Su Lin is still carrying your baby. You still need proof that you're entitled to a future. Just look at the woman. She's been with you for five years. Does she think you're a foreign body? No. She loves you. She's the only woman you've ever met who doesn't give a shit about the baggage. And if you feel pushed out now, well, that's not her fault. We should never have been here. None of us. It's not just you. Open the door. 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 Open the door.